Okay, so I was an idiot, and after I upgraded to Mojave, and the Mac was telling me, hey, you ought to enable this accessibility feature, and I accidentally clicked deny, and uh, I literally cannot click the mouse inside the virtual machine window anymore. <laughs> I don't know what I did. Oh, uh, no! Oh, thank God. <laughs> God, that was such a pain. <clears throat> Saying, oh yeah, thank you for downloading Ubuntu and trying it out. Would you like to go straight to the installer? I swear I thought I was out of the woods with these f trucks, and I guess I'm not. Okay, folks, Jordan here, today with another software overview video. But before we get started, I figured that I'd just kind of have fun with a little bit of the psychedelic MacBook Pro 2018 wallpapers that ship in Mac OS Mojave. Yes, I am running Mojave, so all of the previous videos leading up to this one were done with High Sierra, so it will look a little bit different. I am hopefully eventually, and I'm not sure when this is going to happen, but eventually I'm going to be upgrading my VMware Fusion program, so it will hopefully integrate the dark mode that you see within the rest of the operating system. Like for example, Notes here has a dark interface and so on and so forth. So hopefully that all gets integrated. But anyway, I'm blabbing at this point. We are going to take a look today at Ubuntu 10.04 long-term support, otherwise known as Lucid Links, released on the 29th of April, 2010. Although interestingly, it was announced back in September, 2009, specifically on the 19th at the Atlanta Linux Fest. Now, I don't know why they would announce it so early when Ubuntu 9.10 wasn't even announced, but whatever, it is what it was, and that's how it happened. So, pretty interesting. But this operating system release was important in the sense that it got a huge, I guess, in the sense of the color scheme visual overhaul. Well, it wasn't just the color scheme, actually. The whole interface got a little bit of a revamp, and it was a bit controversial, but we'll get onto that here in just a little bit. For now, let's talk about the improvements inside of Ubuntu 10.04 LTS. The first new improvement was that the boot animations were different. Again. Now, I know this is not really a big important feature, but it's something to point out because they weren't actually using the old boot screen program that they were using before. They using they started using a new one known as Plymouth, and Plymouth allows for boot animations. And we'll see the new splash screen when we start up the computer. And what's also interesting is that the boot up process is a little bit different in many different aspects, actually. The first of which, it doesn't come up to a language selection screen by default. Instead, what it does, and this is still how they do it today, it comes up with a little button that says, press a key on your keyboard to access the accessibility menu or whatever. And then that gives you the traditional style of menu. However, by default, it defaults to English with US keyboard layout and whatever, and it just boots right up. You don't have to do anything else. You don't have to tell it to start up right into the live environment. It'll just start up on its own automatically, which is a nice improvement, saves time. And you know, and you still get the features if you really want them, but you don't need them, especially for most people, since most people would speak English. You know, that's just how it's going to be. But in other countries, maybe their locale settings are different, and thus maybe the download for them is a little bit different, and so it defaults to their native language. I'm not sure. I suppose that's all pretty customizable. This is Linux after all. But it wasn't the only thing that was different, aside from also the boot screen being different. The way that the operating system on the live disk image interacts is a little bit different. Instead of going straight to the desktop, which you can still access, of course, as is tradition, what's interesting is that it comes up with this little menu saying, oh yeah, thank you for downloading Ubuntu and trying it out. Would you like to go straight to the installer? I swear I thought I was out of the woods with these f trucks, and I guess I'm not. Anyway, as I was going to say before the semi-truck interrupted me, that window that comes up on startup, which you'll soon see, of course, is mentioning, oh yeah, you can try out Ubuntu or you can jump straight into the installer. And the thing that's nice about it, too, is that it saves on boot time, so it starts up a little more quickly. But then that means if you don't care about the live desktop right away, you could just jump straight into the installer and install the operating system and get it done more quickly, which I think is a 
pretty nice idea. And I don't know if that took inspiration from the old OEM thing, because that still started up into the live desktop environment, but either way, that was a nice little improvement. I guess you could say that's probably a little bit controversial because some people, they wanted to boot straight into the desktop. So if they wanted to boot into the live desktop, that would take probably like another 15 or more seconds to do it instead of having it jump right in. But I suppose it's not really the end of the world. It's just a nitpick. You have to just click one more button and then it works. But either way, that that's just kind of nitpicking at the end of, this, at the, end of the day. So whatever. Another thing that was really interesting that I didn't know was GIMP was actually removed by default in Ubuntu 10.04 long-term support because of the amount of uh, space that the program took up on the disk. So in order to cut down on the file size, they just took GIMP out. And what's nice is they say that if you still want it, you just go into the Ubuntu Software Center and you go and download it, which is a pretty nice little time uh, time saver thing. You don't have to go to like the GIMP website and download it and try to fuss with installing it. You just install it from the Ubuntu Software Center, which is pretty nice. Another interesting improvement was for the NVIDIA proprietary graphics drivers. Of course, by default, the operating system defaults to the open source driver known as Novo. That is still, I believe, how they do it today in Ubuntu 18.04 long-term support and soon to be 18.10, whatever they call that. It's got some kind of a C in the name. I haven't researched to see what the name is yet, but don't quote me on that. It's probably going to be down below in the description or in the comments, whatever, before I know it. But anyway, yeah, they improved the NVIDIA drivers and made it a lot more compatible uh, at the time for the graphics cards that were out. Another interesting change, or I guess addition to the operating system, was the social media integration. Now, I remember from Ubuntu 9.04, or 9.04, whatever you want to call it, that there was supposed to be some kind of like web services integration thing inside of the OS. Well, I was trying to look for social media in 9.04, and obviously we know that didn't exactly pan out, but I believe this is what I was looking for was the social media integration because in 10.04 long-term support, they actually integrated social networking sharing options such as Facebook and Twitter into the operating system. And I think we might just try that in this video. I don't know if they still work. I probably don't think they will, but it's still worth trying nonetheless. So now let's talk about the elephant in the room, the new theme. And while we talk about the new theme, let's get this thing started up because I figure it's probably a lot better to get right into the operating system and let it boot up while we blab about the new theme. So the new theme was inspired by the idea of light by Canonical at least. And what they said was, we're drawn to light because it denotes both warmth and clarity and intrigued by the idea that light is a good value in software. Good software is light in the sense that it uses your resources efficiently, runs quickly, and can easily be reshaped as needed. Ubuntu represents a break with the bloatware of proprietary operating systems and an opportunity to delight to those who use computers for work and play. More and more of our communications are powered by light, and in future, our processing power will depend on our ability to work with light too. Visually, light is beautiful. Light is ethereal. Ethereal, I think that's how you say that word. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm trying to read my notes here. Light brings clarity and comfort. Historical perspective, blah, 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 blah. They talked about the Ubuntu philosophy once again. So that's what Canonical officially said, at least on their website, when they introduced Ubuntu 10.04 long-term support. However, the press was not exactly pleased with it. Well, they did like the color improvements. It looked a lot more modern, a lot more elegant, and I personally liked the look of it, but there was a bit of controversy around the buttons. Oh yes, the buttons. And um, I'm, I believe Tech Reporter, I think it's June Auza. I'm not sure how you're supposed to pronounce your name. I'm sorry if I'm jumbling that. Anyway, they worked at TechSource back in the days of this operating system's introduction, and they said that the theme of the operating system was too close to Mac OS X, saying, and I quote, I think Ubuntu is having an identity crisis right now and should seriously consider changing several things in terms of look and feel to avoid being branded as a Mac OS X ripoff or worse, get sued by Apple. June also said, and I quote, I believe the fans are divided right now. Some have, I, some have learned to love the brown color scheme since it uniquely represents Ubuntu while others want to change. Well, I don't know if that's entirely accurate to this operating system having a brown theme. It's more like a dark gray theme. I guess there's a little bit of brown in it, 
but I don't know. I could be wrong on that. But anyway, let's get into this operating system and check it out. Now, as you can see, that new little installer screen thing came up saying that, oh yeah, you can go ahead and install it right away or you can jump right in and not make any changes to your system. Well, I think we're gonna give the regular installation thing without the desktop a try. And as you can see, this looks a little different too. Instead of having the barber's pole style progress bar, it's now a solid color. And it, I think it kind of sort of works with the theme. It looks all right. Although personally, I've never been such a big fan of the particular theme they used between 10.04 and I think it was 12.04. I'm not sure when they introduced the Unity theme. I'd have to look that up. But whenever they went to the first gen of Unity on the desktop release, not just the netbook remix, I've never really been a big fan of it. It looks okay in the modern releases, but the older ones, not so much. I didn't really like the older ones nearly as much as I do the modern day ones, but I guess that's just subjective. Anyway, I don't know why this is not working. I'm just gonna go ahead and skip the setting of the clock. That's just pointless. All right, good, it's already picked up the time zone. That's a good sign. Keyboard layout is the same. One thing that's interesting is that a lot of the icons have been stripped out. I'm not sure why this is. A lot of the old arrows and the X's and the check marks, at least at this phase, are erased, they're gone. It's weird. And I'm not saying I don't appreciate minimalism, but I think this is a bit much when you're taking out things that people probably familiarize themselves with. So I don't know, that's that's my two cents on that thing. I don't think I really like the change where they decrease the amount of icons. I think they fixed that though in later versions. So that's a good thing. So anyway, we're just gonna go ahead and get to installing this. And let's look at the splash screen. Thank you for choosing Ubuntu 10.04 long-term support. I'm gonna go and full screen this real quick. This release marks a major milestone in the Ubuntu project. It is easier and more reliable than ever with hundreds of improvements, including a new video editor. Hmm, interesting. Integrated social networking and a growing selection of extra software. Whether you're new to Ubuntu or a long-time user, we're sure there's something you will enjoy. While Ubuntu is installed, this slideshow will show you around. And of course, they say Ubuntu is designed to be easy, feel free to explore, which I would sure hope that it is. Browse the web with Firefox. Ubuntu comes with the widely acclaimed Firefox web browser. It protects your privacy and personal information so you can surf worry-free. Give Firefox your own personal touch with add-ons. You can choose from thousands of themes and extensions that tailor it to how you use the web. And I believe it was either this OS or the next release. I don't remember which one it was in particular, but I believe this launched Firefox 3.6. I'm not entirely sure. This particular version of long-term support Ubuntu came with Ubuntu, or Ubuntu, God. it came with Firefox, I think it was version 10, because this is 10.04.4, uh, so it has a much later release of Firefox, and I want to say it was like version 10 or 11 of Firefox, but I think the original one came with 3.6. We need to share and enjoy your photos. With FSpot Photo Manager, it is really easy to share, touch up, and organize digital photos. Use tags to describe your photos so that they are easy to find later on. Use the export option to write your photos to CDs. <laughs> Who does that anymore? Email them to friends or share them online, hence the social media thing. To get started, choose FSpot from the graphics applications menu or attach a digital camera and follow the prompts. Now, that's a bit subjective as to whether or not that might have worked, but I don't know. I don't have a camera on hand to try that and see what the process looks like. And honestly, I don't think many people really care either. So I'm not going to bother doing that in this video. And we didn't get to finish this slideshow because, of course, the installation is complete. And we need to restart the computer in order to use the new installation. It's kind of a shame that they don't let you finish the slideshow if your computer's too fast. Anyway, please remove the disk and close the tray if any, then press enter. Wow, that was so hard. It's nice that they fixed that too, because that was really annoying. Another thing that's been fixed is there's no more grub bootloader thing coming up on the startup, which is pretty nice. So it just jumps straight into the Ubuntu logo, and man, was that startup quick. I mean, that was really quick. I could barely see the Ubuntu logo before this thing just jumped right into the login screen. That's just crazy. So anyway, the interface for the login screen looks identical to that of 9.10. It's just the background's different, and the whole entire theme reflects the new uh, light theme in the Ubuntu. So we're just gonna go ahead and log in here. Again, the startup sounds are identical to that of the previous Ubuntu since they got that new startup sound back in Ubuntu 6.10. So nothing different there. So that's not too bad, but you can see some of these icons are just missing. 
I don't know why these are missing in particular. It's just weird. Anyway, let's go ahead and get the monitor increased in resolution because I can't see a thing on this monitor. There we go. It's going to get really annoying when every freaking Ubuntu defaults to 800 by 600 when it starts up. It's kind of annoying. So here we are. This is Ubuntu 10.04 long-term support. And uh, the theme itself, let's go ahead and see if we can get some things open here. Let's do, I guess we can do the text editor program. We can go and get the home folder up here. And we can get Firefox open, which again is not the correct version of Firefox for this operating system when it first came out. Like I said, this one's running like Firefox 10, and that's not correct. This thing launched with 3.6, I believe. So this is much, much later than what would have normally shipped with the operating system. But nonetheless, that doesn't really matter too much. As you can see, GIMP is no longer inside of the graphics option menu, because like I said, that was taken out by default. But pretty much everything else is still here, the same as 9.10. A lot of the games were actually cut out too in order to save on space. That was another thing that wasn't actually mentioned was a lot of the games were cut in order to save space on the live disc. Um, I believe this still fits on a CD. And given all the improvements with the operating system, it kind of makes sense why they would cut out so many games that people probably don't play. They only left in the more popular ones such as Solitaire, Mahjong, Mines, and the Tetris clone as well as Sudoku, who really plays Sudoku, but I'm not complaining. That's not a bad thing. So yeah, it, it's a lot more reduced, but that means there's a lot less bloat, a lot less outdated bloat, which means everything hopefully works a little bit better. Empathy is still in the operating system, but there's a new option called Gwibber or Gwibber, which obviously the G stands for GNOME, and this will be the social media integration client, and I figure we'll check that out. So let me go ahead and close all these windows here. I figure we all have a look at the theme now. So let's see what accounts they have support for. We have Flickr, Twitter, look at that old Twitter icon, oh my god. Been a while since I've seen that. StatusNet, Kaiku, I think that's how you're supposed to say that, I'm not entirely sure. There's Facebook, of course, uh, FriendFeed, Dig, and identity.ca. I'm not sure if most of these are actually still active. That would be fun to research. But I think first things first, let's try doing Twitter. Let's see if that actually ends up working here. I think it brings up a Firefox window, but I could be wrong. I don't really know. Um, either that or this doesn't actually work. I'm not entirely sure what's supposed to happen. But uh, whatever, right? Um, well, I think you have to sign it in Firefox, so let's go load up Twitter inside of Firefox here. Probably not going to work too well because Firefox is quite old. It's probably going to load the mobile one. Yeah, it has an old version of Firefox. But nonetheless, it should still kind of work, I guess. Let's find out. Alrighty. So, I got bugged about Firefox on Linux. <laughs> not bad. But I don't know if that's supposed to pop into here. I, I don't see anything for authorizing Ubuntu with Twitter, so... So I don't think that's working, unfortunately. And I guess that's to be expected because obviously this is a pretty ancient operating system. Oh, interesting. So yeah, we're still limited to 140 characters on our tweets, but that's to no surprise by anybody. But I almost wonder if there's an additional, let's see, where is the preferences? Oh no, I gotta hit accounts, not preferences, whoops. Let's try loading the Facebook one. Let's see if that does anything. Ah, here we go. Ah, oh, it didn't work because uh, TLS fatal alert has been received. And that's to no surprise because I think this operating system only has like what? Uh, TLS 1.1. And I think a lot of people have moved on to TLS 1.2 or maybe even newer. So this is probably not going to work anymore. Not surprising, but still unfortunate that we can't log into Facebook with that little utility. But then again, it, again, it makes sense because everybody's moving on in the web security world because obviously you don't want to be using out of date protocols. So that's to be expected. So I suppose one thing we can check out here is all of the wallpapers and see if any of them have really changed. I mean, there's probably a couple of different ones in here, but um, I've never really went through and eyeballed them all myself. I still think this one with the Cosmos looks pretty neat, but there's a lot of really nice looking wallpapers in here, I gotta say. Like this one in particular, because it's just like a really off, a really blurry, uh, Gaussian blurred, um, Thing. It looks really nice. You got your typical flowers. Those are always nice to see inside of the OS. There's also uh, leaves and whatnot. Some very nice fixtures. I really like them. 
Of course, you can set whatever the heck you want, but I think that looks pretty nice. So I suppose we'll do the obligatory we'll look at OpenOffice here, which is version 3.2, and now sports the Oracle logo, because by this point, Oracle had already bought up the Sun Microsystems Corporation, and this was updated. This could be a later release as well, because again, this is um, Ubuntu 10.04.4, so this could have actually shipped with a slightly older release of OpenOffice, but nonetheless, it was by this point at least already that Sun Microsystems Corporation was already bought up by the Oracle Corporation, and thus they changed all the branding on the operating systems, you know, inbuilt software. So that makes sense. And I believe that GNOME is actually, I don't know when they stopped using it. I know in Ubuntu they stopped using it shortly after this release, but I believe in uh, Solaris they, they still use GNOME or something of that flavor. I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, I'm just blabbing at this point. Here is F-Spot. This is uh, obviously the photo thing that GIMP, uh, you know, sacrificed itself for. Although not necessarily in a bad way, but that's the import program. Honestly, it's it's a pretty complete package. I mean, even still, I mean, there's a bunch of things probably missing. Um, but whatever. Uh, I'm actually curious to see what the update manager says. Since this is a slightly newer release... Uh, you will not get any further security fixes or critical updates. Please upgrade to a later version of Ubuntu Linux with a bar. I wonder what this loads. I can't wait. I see. It just takes me straight to the downloader for Ubuntu uh, 18.04. Very nice. Very nice. At least the website's not completely broken. It's still loading, though, so I guess I shouldn't be too surprised. But whatever. Yeah. That's to no surprise. Why is this operating system acting like it's broken? That's really annoying. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Seriously? Yes. Just first quit the program. I don't know why it did that, but whatever. Also, what's interesting is that the chat accounts now have a permanent spot next to the multi-user window, which I think is bizarre. I don't know why that's prioritized, but it is. And there you can set up chatting or mail or whatever, and then I guess it tells you if you have new mail. Pretty nice, I suppose. This is broadcast option. Oh, that's just for setting up the accounts. Oh, get out of here. So, there we go. I suppose that's all that we can really show in Ubuntu 10.04 LTS. There's not really too much that works anymore, and the stuff that is here we've pretty much already seen in previous releases, so there's not too terribly much that is new. So I figure at this point, uh, we'll just go ahead and shut it down and end the video. And with the, having that been said, I'm going to thank you all for watching. And I'll see you all in the next one. But wait, there's one more thing, and that is the website. No, I didn't forget. I just figured I'd leave it until the very end and not spoil it in the video. Because I know some people, they just probably didn't want to look at the websites. And that's understandable. But anyway... Let's go ahead and check out the old Ubuntu website, which still has the broken Ubuntu link over here in the corner. I don't know why that is, but whatever. As you can see, they advertise Ubuntu 10.04 LTS. It's time for change. Your computer can be better. It can be fast, fun, and easier to use. And as you can see, they advertise things such as the Ubuntu Software Center. They also advertise the social media thing with the Twitter thing, as you can see that must have worked brilliantly back in the day, as well as the Ubuntu One Music Store, which I don't know if that's actually still a thing. I don't know how much stuff Canonical actually has inside of Ubuntu nowadays that actually still works, like the Music Store, for example. I have to go check that out, because I'm not entirely sure what they still have in that, if they even still have that running, but whatever. Again, the website is very minimalist. There's not much here. It's pretty boring, so I just figured that I'd save this until the very end, since not too much is interesting. So now that's really it for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.